It's been calculated that methane-producing ruminant livestock contribute to around 16% of New Zealand's greenhouse gas emissions. A four-year study is seeking ways of reducing methane production in an animal's rumen by identifying the organisms that produce hydrogen and methyl compounds and finding ways of reducing the supply of them to the methane-producing bacteria that live in the rumen. This research is an international collaboration, so it involves uh, scientists here at AgResearch working with Otago University. And then we have two international collaborators, Professor Rod Mackey at the University of Illinois and the Satoshi Kawiki who's at uh, Hokkaido University in, in Japan. The work is funded by international partnerships. We utilise that to get expertise in areas where we don't have that expertise. I like to think of uh, ruminant animals like a vehicle, like a car. So they consume fuel, which is the, the forages and the grass that they, that they eat. And then they ferment them in their first two stomachs, or the four stomach, or reticulo rumen. Um, and that's, you know, that's the combustion, or the fermentation, as I like to call it. That process basically breaks down the molecules, the, the, the feed in the rumen, and then that's converted to another set of compounds which the animal can use. So the animal absorbs those compounds out uh, and the microbes continue the, the fermentation. The problem with that fermentation is that uh, it produces a, a lot of hydrogen at the end of the fermentation, and that's equivalent to the, the gases coming out the end of the car. And to keep the fermentation going, you have to have those gases produced. Sort of like if you put a bung in the end of a um, exhaust pipe, if you do that, it stops the, the combustion, right? Well, similarly in the fermentation, if you, uh, if you uh, don't get rid of that hydrogen, then the fermentation stops. So uh, in the rumen, uh, the breakdown of the of the forages is, is linked to hydrogen formation and, and these organisms called methanogens, they take that hydrogen and they make methane. And that's the exhaust, uh, if you like, from, from, the, from the engine room of that rumen. The essential problem is that uh, methane is a very uh, potent greenhouse gas. It's got roughly 28 times the global warming potential of, of CO2. So for every molecule of methane, it's, you know, it's equivalent of 28 CO2 molecules. You know, that's obviously a problem for a country like New Zealand, which has a high percentage of its uh, greenhouse gases uh, from agriculture. We, we need to have a way of allowing animal production to continue, but without the uh, methane uh, emissions. So that's, that's the type of work that we do. We're investigating how methane is formed in the rumen, and then uh, what we can do to um, stop that formation or redirect that hydrogen, which they mainly feed off, redirect that to other uh, endpoints. We've been working on a range of different organisms which either produce hydrogen or produce methyl compounds, things like methanol and trimethylamines. They are released from the breakdown process of uh, forages. So things like pectins have methyl groups attached to them and when they're broken down on the rim and they release methanol. And that methanol or trimethylamine from another source uh, from lipid uh, metabolism. Both of those uh, methyl compounds are important uh, uh, substrates or food for methanogens, or some of the methanogens that are in the rumen. Um, so what we've done is we, we have the cultures of those organisms and we can um, put them into uh, assays where we, we look for compounds which interfere or reduce those uh, either hydrogen production or methyl compound production uh, systems. And we're looking to um, uh, identify different compounds which can, can control them in the room. We, we need to do more in vitro testing before we'd go to an animal trial. But uh, yeah, the, the next step will be to uh, pick our best candidates out of that in room in vitro screen and then take them through to animal trials. It takes about five years to identify you know, good compounds and then it's, it's probably another three to five years to uh, work through the testing in animals and, and get it into a, a commercial product which can be delivered to to an animal. Uh, the most suitable uh, mechanism there is slow release capsule, so you, know, you have to see if the compound is compatible with those sorts of delivery mechanisms. Is it stable? Can it deliver the compound over a sufficient period of time to have an impact? So there's all those sorts of things which need to be tested. We're in the AgriSearch Rumen in vitro laboratory. What happens in here is we make simulations of what happens in the rumen. So we basically make small rumen-like containers at which we inoculate with rumen fluid and we follow the um, uh, fermentation. Now, the, the beauty of, of that is we can follow in detail what's happening in a rumen fermentation, so we can uh, measure the, the headspace gases that are produced from that fermentation, so we can figure out how much methane and how much hydrogen is produced. But we can also take samples of those fermentations and look, look at uh, what volatile fatty acid products are produced 
And we've also got a, uh, a DNA extraction method we use to identify which organisms are present and how they change over the, over the course of the fermentation and what impacts uh, the, the compounds that we put into the fermentations have on the microbial community that's there. In the methane facility, we're looking at how different forages can influence the uh, amount of methane that's formed in cattle. And that is a way of reducing methane with, without having too much of an impact on, on production. So those types of studies are allowing us to understand what other features of the rumen fermentation can be manipulated. There's a whole uh, range of different forages which can have uh, methane reducing activity if they're fed to ruminants. We have dedicated facilities for growing microbes which don't grow in the presence of oxygen. So those anaerobic microbes uh, require special cultivation techniques and our labs are set up to enable us to, to grow these organisms. We do pure culture growth of uh, bacteria and methanogens uh, and we grow them up and we do experiments on them to see what, what controls their growth, how we can uh, interfere with their growth. And uh, methanogens are particularly um, uh, strict anaerobes, that means uh, even the, the the slightest whiff of oxygen will kill them. So the techniques we, we use have to be very um, strict and, and to exclude oxygen, and that's why we have these, 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 tech, these labs uh, set up to do that.